we always talk about uh, photonic integration and uh, photonic integration circuits, the chips, uh, but what does it mean to apply a, a photonic integration chip in a real product? So we talk about system integration, system architecture. That's also the topic of the coming conference in uh, October. And today I'm going to talk with uh, Ivana Sergik vollebroek She's project manager at Demcon Advanced Mechatronics, and she has experience in um, in integrating uh, uh, PICs in uh, final products. So welcome, uh, Ivana. Thank you very much for being at Yakayima TV. Thank you. And uh, let's immediately start with your presentation. So go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so and thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'd be very happy to speak about photonic uh, photonics integration in product development. So photonic integrated uh, chips uh, and system engineering. And um, yeah, first of all, uh, to introduce myself a little bit and uh, what gives me the right to talk about this topic um, well, the, is my background. I have uh, both academic and um, industrial background. So I, I did a PhD in nanophotonics at the Vom Institute Amhof uh, in the Netherlands. And the topic of uh, my research was uh, metamaterials, or what I usually like to tell to my parents or anyone else who doesn't have a background in it, is I try to make things invisible. Um, yeah, and that, uh, that's exactly it. It was a very exciting and very sci-fi like sounding uh, with applications that were, um, well, I have to admit, quite far uh, from today. Um, so I did really want to go and work somewhere close to applications uh, and that's an in industry. Uh, so I took up a position as a reservoir engineer in the research department of Shell Global Solutions, uh, oil and gas company. And amongst others, I work there on screening development and maturation of uh, metering, but also novel technologies um, for metering for enhanced oil recovery. Mm -hmm. And some of those did involve uh, photonics. So that was uh, highly satisfying to be able to bring my background. So something novel in well, actually quite an old industry, uh, quite a mature industry as uh, oil and gas. Yeah. Um, and during my uh, time there, I did... Um, I did realize that I do miss uh, a little bit more of photonics um, and I was very happy to get an opportunity to go back to academia um, and do a, a postdoc uh, research, post, uh, postdoc position at TU Eindhoven, which was um, actually an industrial postdoc. So I got to um, work together with TNO and uh, try to integrate in a system, in a, in a metrology system, a photonic-based sensor that was developed at uh, TU Eindhoven. So that was the first time that I got into contact really with system integration um, and well, you might say almost the beginning of product development rather than process development that I've done uh, mm. until then. Um, and that was also a good basis for my current job as a project manager uh, leading high-tech pro uh, projects at uh, Demcon, um, next to which I also do business development uh, for photonics. Um, so yeah, the, the difference that I saw from academia to industry, but also for, from process development to product development, um, I think that gives me a, a, quite a wide view on the whole process of going from idea to a product. And what I'm uh, currently very focused on is obviously product development and how does that work at Demcon. Um, that's, yeah, that's described in our quality management system. And that's something I'd like to highlight because it's a very, um, yeah, this whole process is very essential for product development. Mm -hmm. And it's much different from when you go, um, when you start doing uh, technology development or when you start with an idea and a technical feasibility. So for product development, what's very important is um, the first feasibility stage, which is not the same as technical feasibility. Uh, this is a product feasibility stage. So it's coming up with requirements for your product um, in close collaboration with the customer. Um, so looking at uh, what are the conditions, um, what are the specifications, um, a, a whole spectrum of uh, things um, based on which you then come up with a concept, a concept design. And then you together again with the customer decide, okay, this concept is the best and this will uh, achieve these uh, specifications. And once that is uh, decided on, then the actual engineering, the hardcore engineering starts. So you start with your detailed design and then you um, end realization. So you come to an alpha, what is called an alpha design and an alpha uh, product or actually a prototype. Mm -hmm. um, many companies are interested in um, developing prototypes. And sometimes it happens that uh, companies do want also um, volume. 
production. Well, in that case, um, you need to reassess your design because maybe uh, volume or manufacturing was not part of the requirements in the beginning, but it might influence design choices that are made. Yeah. Yeah. So all these disciplines that come together in system engineering um, for product development, they need to um, really pay attention uh, to these kind of requirements. And so, yeah, you have to redesign sometimes, and then you get to your beta uh, product. Um, and this is also the point where you usually involve the supply chain and the production um, uh, party. Um, so that's uh, that's in a nutshell the whole process and how we work with the with, with product development. Um, and as I mentioned, yeah, the, the, the big differences that I see um, and that I will also try to highlight during the conference talk, uh, based on two examples where we did actually take photonic integrated chips and uh, use them as subsystems in our uh, uh, product development. Um, so I see it as a, a two things. Uh, one is idea creation. This one is very academic in nature. It's uh, very researching. So you are focused on technical feasibility of your subsystem. Mm -hmm. You're focused on ultimate performance, uh, proof of principles, um, whether, yeah, whether, whether this is yeah, something much better than what already exists, uh, for example. And then you have the other part, um, which is product development. Um, and there the focus is much different. Um, and there the yeah, challenges are much different. And I think these are next challenges for photonics, uh, probably. And that's um, yeah, system inte uh, integration. Um, so how can you integrate a photonic system into, um, into a product that has to interface? So it has to interface with a lot of different um, parts, subsystems, such as electronics, such as mechanics, um, etc. But also there's uh, many challenges on specifications. Um, so, uh, is it user friendly? Uh, is it compatible with its environment and other uh, parts? Um, there's sometimes uh, requirements on durability. How long can it last? Mm -hmm. uh, repeatability, um, all kinds of conditions that possibly were not part of the initial investigation of the technical feasibility of your, um, let's say, subsystem solution. And um, most important uh, in product development, there's a lot of focus on the DFX, design for, so design for prototype or design for volume or et cetera. Uh, this gives a very different mindset on how you look at uh, your development. Um, and I think, yeah, for photonics, that will be probably the next uh, big challenge, how to, how to resolve this. Um, because very often you see that for uh, photonic integrated chips uh, to embed them into a system, you do need custom-made electronics. And this has certain implications on your control loops, on the price, um, et cetera. Um, but I think it's... Uh, this is, is, is that also, uh, let's say, one of the, the essential differences uh, with, let's say, traditional electronic uh, system integration for electronic products, pure electronic products? Um, not necessarily, but in my experience, uh, yes. So okay. from what I've seen so far, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. And um, I think that the biggest impact will then in making, yeah, let's say, a photonic-based product will be in uh, making this impact by product thinking, by not simply thinking on you know, is this the best sensor I have, but in okay, is this the best product I can make for my customer? Um, with, with the limitations of, for instance, the chip, so so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Okay, so this is, and, and you're during the conference, you're going to talk about two uh, concrete projects you've done. Uh, yes. So we won't go in that for further detail. That's the, what people can uh, watch uh, during the conference. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, well, thank you very much for your, uh, let's say, very brief and concise uh, explanation how you think about idea creation and product development. As always, I, I, at the end of a presentation or a talk, and I ask a personal question, so a bit about the person, the person behind the presentation, the presenter. So, and that's about what's your favorite art or your favorite music. So, tell us what your favorite <laughs> thing is. <laughs> My favorite thing, yeah. So I, uh, yeah, uh, of course, I like to read a lot, and I have a very limited time for that, uh, seeing that I have a three-year-old uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, read a lot of children's books. Ah. Um, <laughs> which is actually very interesting to do once you're a grown-up. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, maybe you know this, but I do have quite a lot of passion for uh, innovation and uh, for uh, yeah, novel technologies. Yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, one story that comes to mind then is uh, Pinocchio that I can. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after having it read again uh, and again and again to my daughter, <laughs> I thought, okay, well, this is actually an example of a yeah a craftsman. Or, well, he's not an engineer, but let's say a parallel yeah. to an engineer who is yeah. creating something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he needs this final, let's say, breath, or the, the he needs to give a soul to his uh, his creation. The, the the design itself is not enough. No. Uh, but there's this extra, well, in this case, it's uh, it's courage of Pinocchio himself. Um, so belief, uh, belief in the technology, uh, which uh, makes him a real boy. Uh, <laughs> I find that okay. a funny parallel. Oh well, that's that's a very nice end of this uh, this this talk because. Uh, you bring the, the ten, your daily work in, in combination with a, a book, which is a great book, by the <laughs> way. So, uh, so I would like to thank you very much for your presentation and look forward to uh, listen to your uh, presentation during the conference. And, uh, and then we talk further in detail about the two projects you're working on. So thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome.